So a lot of paintings are doomed right from the start because of the photo that's being used as a reference. Do not let that happen to you by watching this video. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. All right, painting from photos. First off, is it okay to paint from photos? A lot of artists out there are constantly painting from real life. And the answer is yes, it's okay to paint from photos. Is it better to paint from life? Yes, it is better to paint from real life, but you always can't paint from real life. And if you wait every time that you can paint from real life to paint, you're not gonna be painting enough to get better. I'd rather paint seven days a week using photos than paint only two or three times a week because I'm painting from real life. All right, so there've been many times that I put myself in a very bad position by choosing a bad photo to paint from. And most of the time, you don't even realize that you're choosing a bad photo. Even when you're painting it, you don't realize that it's a bad photo. You just think you're just not a good painter. Um, and that's why I think this is really important to talk about because uh, mentally, like it can mess with you if you're painting, painting and you just can't get it right. You don't know why. And a lot of time it's just, you chose a bad photo to start from. All right, so what are some things to think about when you're choosing or taking a photo to paint from? All right, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is just detail. Uh, make sure there's enough detail, for, enough information in the photo that you'll be able to paint it. Uh, this is probably the most common thing that's happened to me because I'll get commissions of people who have a certain particular photograph that they want painted um, because that photograph is meaningful in some way. They want this particular photo, but that photo is blurry or it's far away or it's not good quality and I can't see any detail and I just know like this isn't going to make a good painting. So be aware of that. Make sure that you can zoom in on the painting like on your computer that you or you know you can blow it up or you can see the detail you need because like when it comes time to you know paint an eye and you know the eyelid and the eyebrow and the eyesight, it's all just kind of like one shape it's going to be it's, it's just not going to turn out very well unless you're going for a very simplistic style type thing but other than that I wouldn't recommend it. If you're just starting out painting I highly recommend painting from photos that have a very distinct light source and have very clear highlights and shadows. I say this because it's very difficult to identify the shapes and the forms uh, while painting if you don't have a distinct light source. Um, like right now, the light that I'm using is a very soft light and it, you can't see, you know, I don't have any harsh shadows on my face. And the thing with like harsh shadows, um, distinct highlights is that it makes it very clear the form and the shape of, of objects, which is what you need to identify when you're painting. So, you know, set yourself up for success and choose, you know, photos when you're first starting out uh, where it's very easy to identify these forms and shapes and, you know, a lot of times with uh, very distinct light sources, it makes it a lot easier to identify those things. A lot of time with portrait photography, uh, they'll use really soft, even light on the face, kind of like what I'm doing now. It just makes, you know, people look better, makes the skin look better, makes, you know, everything seem softer. And that's great for portrait photography, but uh, it, it's very difficult to paint. Like you, you know, you can paint from those photos. You just have to be really good with value because the value changes are very, very subtle. And with uh, landscapes, a thing to watch out for is using photos where it's kind of like an overcast day. Um, there are a lot of uh, paintings of overcast days and gray, you know, landscapes that are really, really good. And I, I personally like that um, more. I find it, it's a, I like it more because it's more difficult to do. I appreciate it a lot more. Um, and you can do that. It's just when you're starting out, you know, you want to get some momentum and get some confidence. So don't be trying to uh, paint like landscapes uh, where it's you know overclass and cloudy and there's no distinct shadows and no distinct you know highlights on the trees and stuff like that because it's gonna be very very difficult to do um, and it m might mess with your confidence a little bit if you're just starting out and you're painting this landscape and it's not turning out well because you tried to paint you know one of the most difficult types of landscapes to paint which is a gray day overcast day all right um, if you're taking photos from the internet, which is what a lot of people do to paint, uh, just be aware of filters. Um, a lot of people will put filters on the photos to make them better and everything like that. And, you know, even though we are painting for photos, I always feel like the ideal is to try and make it 
look like you painted it from life as much as possible. Um, so be able to identify when there's like a filter on a photo and maybe try to avoid that. A thing that happens a lot with photos is that the highlights can get blown out. A lot of people will, you know, bump up the contrast and the highlights will be kind of blown out of the speed white. And that's not very natural. Um, I don't think that makes it really good paintings. I mean, if you're going for a certain stylistic look, that could be cool. But um, if you're trying to make it look as natural as possible, you know, if you look around, like, you know, when you're looking at stuff in life, like nothing's blown out. So if you do get a photo that has something blown out, you can adjust if you have Photoshop or even some apps on phones that you can take the highlights and bring them down a little bit. Uh, it'll give you some more information about what is happening in those blown out areas. It might not be the exact right color, but um, you can see a little more when you do that. All right, so talking about darks in photos, um, a lot of, uh, or all photos are the contrast is gonna be more than real life. You painted like exactly how the photo is. Just photos tend, the darks tend to be dark and the lights tend to be lighter uh, than real life. So if you have a photo, I always bump down the contrast just a little bit. Uh, and you know, give, cause nothing is really, you know, like I was talking before, nothing's ever really blown out to full white in real life. Also, very rarely as things go all the way black until you just can't see it anymore. Um, so it's a good thing to kind of take down the contrast uh, when you choose a photo. Also, with uh, particularly in landscapes, if you're taking photos of a landscape to paint, make sure you um, expose for the sky in one photo and then take another photo, uh, expose it for everything else because it's very, you know, cameras can't uh, exposed for like you know shadows underneath a tree and also the bright you know sky with the sun in it so make sure you take a bunch of photos exposing for different uh, parts of the landscape so that you have all that information all right so there are a lot of advantages with painting from photos one of it is that you can have a black and white version of your photo which I highly recommend having while painting have your color and have your black and white and use the black and white one to gauge your values. Uh, this is the most common thing that beginning artists struggle with because I feel like it's the hardest thing to kind of wrap your head around and to be able to see and identify, which is values. Color is one thing, but values is a different thing and, and being really aware of lights and darks and the relationships to each other. And a black and white photo makes it very easy because it takes out the color and you're only seeing light and dark. And you can you know, look at your painting, look at your black and white and, and really gauge that you're hitting your values correctly. Another advantage is that you can take your photo and put it right next to your painting. And it sounds like not that big of an important thing, but I, this is huge, I feel like, is having your photo right next to your painting and just being able to quickly, you know, left to right like it it just helps so much especially with the drawing phase and just comparing if you can just shift your eyes left to right left to right you can really get a sense of how it's working together um you know people will get lazy and you know they'll have it on their computer you know far away and they can't see or over here they're constantly going left and right left and right and i've gotten into that habit before and the pain just doesn't turn out and also, I do recommend if you can painting from an image on a computer because one, you can zoom in, two, the colors are better and you're not painting the colors that a printer came up with because all printers are different and all will print it with different shifts in the color. But with a computer, I feel like it's the closest to real life and you get to make the decisions more on the colors. That being said, be very careful if you have a printout version and a computer version because the colors will be different. And if you kind of going back and forth, it can mess with you with your colors because you'll be painting one certain part, a certain color, and then you'll, you know, without knowing it, like be going to your photo reference, your actual hard copy reference, and that it's gonna be different and it's gonna mess with you and you're not gonna know what's right and just be, just be very aware of that if you have both. Um, another negative with the computer though, is it's hard to get it unless you have like a tablet and some kind of you know, rigging system, which I actually am working on to, to have so where you can have it right next to your painting. Um, you know, a lot of times if it's like on a laptop or something like that. 
it's hard to you know get it right next to your painting uh, that's why also you'll see a lot of artists in their studios will actually mount a full TV um, you know right next to their easel so they can have like you know their TV with their image and then their uh, and then they're painting uh, it's really good to have a TV because of the size that's another kind of negative thing if you are working from uh, like a tablet or a computer screen they can only be so big and, and you know having a bigger size really does help a lot all right so that's what I have to say about painting from photos I hope this uh, helped you identify any problems that you're having with painting from photos and gave you some solutions to those problems. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at Forza43. If there's any other topics that you'd like discussed about oil painting or painting or drawing, uh, please leave them uh, those comments in the comment section below and I will make a video on that. I'm Christopher Natero here telling you to go get painting.